Hi, it's Chris here from the EQMod project. This video is going to look at right ascension limits or meridian limits. Okay, now by default, when you install EQASCOM, uh, meridian limits are actually already active. Uh, and you can tell that by looking at the dial display. And if you see these yellow bars, this is telling you that limits are being applied to the right ascension axis. If we open up the main setup screen, you can see there is a mount limits section, uh, and under there there's a checkbox to enable the limits. If I disable them, these little yellow bars will disappear. If I re-enable them again, they will reappear. And these are the default limits, which are basically set at just past the meridian uh, position. So whenever the mount uh, moves to a position where its counterweights are horizontal, um, the limits will trigger. And I'll show that in action. Okay, so if I go to a a star that is to one side of the meridian, here's the meridian line down here. And I'll just attempt to speed up that uh, saloon. So we don't waste any time. Okay, if I set the mount tracking now, um, once the mount moves to the limit position, the tracking will be stopped automatically. Now, I'm not going to track it at uh, sidereal because that's going to take a long time. Uh, I've put in a custom rate here just for the purposes of this demonstration. So if I move it that, you'll see the mount moves up to the meridian line, goes slightly past it, uh, and then stops. If we look at the main EQASCOM display, we'll see that it's telling us um, that we're at the meridian limit. If I back away from that limit point, that's going the wrong way, sorry, if I back away from the limit point, as soon as I get out of the limit uh, condition, uh, the display reverts back to normal, and you can continue tracking and slewing and all the other things that you might want to do. Okay. Another option you have as, as to opposed to just stopping the mount um, is to park it. If we go into the uh, mount, configura mount limits configuration screen, you'll see there's an option to park whenever a limit condition occurs. So if I select that, what it will do, it will park to whatever the currently selected park is, and I've currently got it to the home position. Uh, let's track the scope this time. Let's just move it to one side. Okay. And then we'll set it tracking again. So once it gets to that limit position, Parking. it now parks automatically. Parked. In this case, it's going back to the home position. Now, of course, a lot of people actually want to be able to track past the meridian. Um, and a lot of mounts or a lot of uh, telescope equipment that, that you've got fitted to your your mounts will allow you to track some way past the meridian before there's any danger of, of, of any collisions with tripods or, or, or piers. Um, so to do that we need to change the limit positions. Okay, I'm just going to un just unpark. Uh, and to do this I'm going to disable my limits first of all. Um, this is just so I can move the mount to any position without uh, any automated uh, actions occurring. Then I'm going to open up the Mounts Limits Editor. And, and to set the limit positions, all we have to do is move the mount to the positions where we want the limits to occur. Like so. Obviously, this is going to take a little bit of time, so I shall edit this out of the video.
OK, so let's assume that we want to go, say, two hours past the meridian. So I'm just going to move two segments past the meridian position to there. And then I'll just click this little green plus uh, button. And that changes the limit position. Now, what, what you really want to do here is, is move into right ascension uh, to where you think you, you want to track to. Uh, and then just spin the mount around in declination to check uh, that all declinations can be reached uh, at that position of right ascension. And that way you know that you, you've set your limit position uh, and, and any movement up to that position uh, will not result in a, a collision. OK, we then just set the, the, the other limit position uh, again by moving the mount to wherever we want it. And again I'll edit this out of the video, this movement. So I'll put this one, say, an hour past the meridian point. And again, we just click this uh, little green plus button, and it moves our limit position. OK, I'm going to remove the park on limit option for the moment, because I've demonstrated that already. Uh, and now if I enable the limits, we'll see they're displayed in their new positions. OK, let's just verify that they're working. Um, to target. So we'll slew to a position um, pretty much where we were starting where we were starting from before. And now if I tell it to track instead of stopping somewhere around here, it'll go much, much further around. I'll just track the scope. So you can see that we've gone past the point at which we would have stopped before, and now we're moving much, much further around. And again, if you wanted the mount to park at this point, you could arrange for it to do so. OK, one other feature um, that you can use with the uh, right ascension limits is an automated flip. Now what I'm going to do is just move us back away from that limit position. And then I'll demonstrate how to do an automated flip. OK, if we look at the limits editor, you'll see there's a checkbox on here that allows you to automatically flip the mount whenever it hits a limit condition. Now, by default this is greyed out and you can't select it. That's because people didn't want to accidentally check this. Uh, automatic flips can cause problems uh, if you're not expecting them to occur you can get cable snags, you can get uh, equipment working loose. So people didn't want this to be something that they could accidentally check. Um, so in, able, in order to use this uh, function, we first have to enable it. And to do that, we have to go to the EQASCOM setup screen. Um, so first of all, I'm going to disconnect EQASCOM. I'm going to bring up the setup screen. And you'll see here's the checkbox Allow Auto Meridian Flip. Select that, reconnect EQSCOM, and we should now see we can select this auto meridian flip option. OK. To 
Okay, so I'm just going to put the put the uh, simulator back on a, a starting position. Actually, I can speed this up. There we go. Now, if I tell it to start tracking, Custom. you'll see it will track up to this limit point, and once it gets there, it will then flip this right ascension axis through 180 degrees. So instead of being here, it will flip it around 180 degrees up to here. As you heard, a klaxon goes off to warn you uh, that a flip's taking place. And of course the uh, declination axis is also flipping around. Now, so this, this feature entirely optional. A lot of people don't like automatic flips. I I don't like automatic flips, um, but some people w wanted to have it uh, in place. And I guess typically what you would do is you would automatically flip. You then probably need to plate solve and and, and recenter and reframe the thing that you were you're looking at. Um, personally, I'd much rather just track through the meridian if I could. And there we are. We've flipped through 180 degrees, uh, and we're back at the place that, or back looking at the uh, the object we were looking at before we flipped. Okay. If you want to put the limits back to their defaults, uh, that's easy enough. You simply click this button here, and they go back to these positions, which, as I said are slightly past the meridians. If you want to disable the mer uh, meridian right ascension limits altogether, you can click this button, in which case you end up with zeros in in, in these boxes here, and the little yellow bars disappear. Um, in which case you now have no uh, right ascension limits being applied. Okay, that probably concludes as much as I want to say about right ascension limits at the moment. Um, they do play a part when it comes into the movement strategies uh, that EQ ASCOM uses, um, but that's probably best covered in a separate video.